you walk into one of the largest craft stores in the world to find Halloween type items and they had nothing. Hey, hey everyone, welcome to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and there is definitely what I would consider an emergency going on when it comes to retail and Q4 and all of these different things. And I really want to get into this emergency today so that you guys are ready and prepared for Q4 because this is a Q4 that in my 18 years of experience, I have never seen this before. I have never seen this kind of disruption and interruption in supply chains and the different ways of sourcing and getting products. And so we will get into that. But first, I need to also remind you that we have brought back our workshops for 2022. And in January, going to Atlanta, Georgia to meet all of you. So I'm hoping that you're able to come. What is a workshop? This is a confident wholesale bundlers workshop. I've been doing this for many years now where we get together in person and we build bundles together. So it's one thing to take an online course and online courses are amazing, of course, because, you know, I say that I've created many of them. I've taken tons of online courses myself and they're really, really helpful. But some of us, aka me, uh, really, really need some hands-on, in-the-moment training questions that you have in the moment, like while you're doing the process. Because as much as it'd be great, I can't sit in your office with you or at your kitchen table with you while you are doing the training and answer questions that just pop up into your head. Yes, we have Q&A sessions for the Wholesale Bundle system, but there's nothing quite like hands-on. Plus, I'm just a people person and I want to be able to meet all of you. So go to my mommyincome.com slash workshop. And don't forget that podcast listeners get an extra uh, discount. So mommyincome.com slash workshop. Use the special discount code workshop50 to save a few dollars joining the workshop. Remember, on the first evening, we just get together. We have some food and drinks. We get to know one another because it's far easier to work with somebody once you've met them and kind of heard a little bit of their story and you're ready to dive in and work. We just kind of get to know one another on the first night. The next day is all workshopping. We review the framework. We talk about the different steps. There's a lot more secret sauce that we go through. And then in the afternoon, after we have a fabulous lunch together and just network and talk to one another is getting down to business. We are going to be building bundles together. And it's just such an amazing experience. People have breakthroughs and their aha moments. And I just absolutely love workshops. So January 13th through the 15th, Atlanta, Georgia, in conjunction with America's Mart, um, the trade show there is fantastic. It's been there for years and years and years. It's one of the first ones of the year. So I would love for you guys to be able to come to that. I want to meet you. I want to be there. So don't forget about the workshops. We already have about half of the seats already filled. So if you really want to come to Atlanta, it's time to register right now. Mommyincome.com slash workshop. Uh, workshop 50 is the coupon code for the podcast listeners. And now let's talk about specifically this emergency that we're going through because honestly it certainly is kind of an emergency I've got a story to tell you just the other day mind you this is like what 10 or 11 days before Halloween walk into Michael's Michael's is you know if for you guys that don't know if you're living under a rock or just never heard of Michael's it is a cra- arts and crafts type store it's where you go to get like cake decorating supplies you know they have some home decor but it's just like your scrapbooking crafting knitting like your whole craft store right so you go in there and they usually they, they're super into all the different holidays because everybody crafts for the holidays so they al- always have an abundance of everything for every season I walk in 11, 12 days before Halloween, the prime week where most people are starting to get together with their costumes or, you know, they're planning parties and they're doing these different things. Maybe they're doing a craft for a classroom. Who knows? You walk into one of the largest craft stores in the world to find Halloween type items and they had nothing. Like, this is not a joke. 
nothing. I was like, did they sell out of their Halloween already? And you guys, I'm very well aware of supply chain issues this year. I mean, I we didn't even get some of our Halloween stuff. Um, our vendors called us and said, well, we can get it to you by maybe the 20th. We're like, and no, that's not going to sell well. You know, we can't even get it into Amazon and get it shipped to anybody before that time. So we were just kind of out on the majority of stuff that we ordered wholesale, which we ordered way back in like March or April, especially for Halloween. Um, and this is out of their control. So there's really no one to point fingers at and to blame. It's not the vendor's fault. It's not our fault, but it's just a reality. And so you walk goes and you see they have nothing. I thought they sold out already of all Halloween. They're already transitioning into whatever. No, they, I had to ask. I'm like, where's all the Halloween stuff? She's like, we didn't get our inventory. She said, we didn't get any of our things, our, our Halloween and barely any of our Thanksgiving inventory. The shelves look so bare. They have taken like storage containers that they probably have like in their back room. Um, they're, they're for sale, but they've taken these storage containers and put them like on the shelves where some of their stuff is supposed to be because their shelves are empty. I mean, it's insane what's not there. And so... I just asked, I said, what happened? She said, we just, we didn't get our Halloween inventory at all. It's still stuck on ships somewhere. And this is a big problem. And so because of this, we need to be more aware and more on our toes about Q4 and about what we want to do with Q4 when we're having supply chain issues. I mean, I can't sell what I don't get. And I didn't get any of my, hardly any of our Halloween stuff either. We've sold some stuff, people that have had, um, different that, that they've had stock that they've been able to sell some people have some have had supply chain issues and some have not but most companies are experiencing some sort of uh, supply chain issues and because of that it's really important to think about how you're going to stock your shelves if your wholesale stuff doesn't come in you guys I've never had to do this before I've never had I mean pre wholesale it was retail arbitrage and I got all of my stuff the way that we're going to talk about right now um, but it's like for the past however many years I have never had to worry about my wholesale orders not coming in they've all come in they've all come in on time I mean back orders are common but not usually when you order something like eight months in advance <laughs> so what are we going to what can we do about this stuff this is the part of the problem is that if you want to have stuff on on sale for Q4 and on your shelf, we're going to have to get a little scrappy. We're going to have to get a little creative. We're going to have to do retail arbitrage, online arbitrage, and a little bit more work in order to continue to have a successful Q4 without supply chain issues. The major issue is there's no products. The products are out there somewhere, but we're not going to get them in time because even if, like what if Michael's ship came in today and all of a sudden they stocked all their Halloween, they tried to get all the stuff unpacked onto their shelves in Halloween before that. Well, I'm probably not going back to Michael's in this Halloween season at least because I already know they don't have product. So what are they going to do with all that? <laughs> We'll talk about that towards the end of the show, but right now we're going to talk about the supply and demand issues so that you can still stock your stuff for Q4 and not have any problems. And just for my for YouTube watchers, um, we're going to be doing a demo here in a minute, so you're going to see this on-screen demo of how you can find some of this stuff online. Podcast listeners, just try to listen closely, maybe write something down or kind of bookmark this part in the podcast so you can go back and actually do the demo for yourself or come on YouTube and watch the section of this where we get into this demo of kind of how to find and how to look for some of these popular products or products that you're looking for from your vendors that might be on shelves somewhere else. Because that was part of the problem. We realized early on in October that we weren't going to, or actually in September, we weren't going to get our Halloween stuff in time. But we didn't want our shelves to be empty for Halloween. So we started looking around at who has product and what type of product they have and where can we get it. Can we order it online from like at retail price? This is retail arbitrage at its finest, I guess, because when the wholesaler's out, then that means... That's all the product that's left. So when there's a supply, the, the demand has not decreased. That's one of the biggest problems uh, about this is that the demand has not decreased. Tons and tons of people, there's what, $9 billion spent on Halloween and those same people that want to spend that same $9 billion every single year want product and product that they can't find. 
And so this is when supply and demand can be a beautiful thing if you've got the supply and the demand is still up and no one else has the supply. That means you can control the market with your prices and everything else. That's a great thing for a retailer. But you've got to be able to get your hands on it. And in order to do that, you've got to be a little bit scrappy about it. You've got to be able to go out there and pick up stuff, retail arbitrage, pay a little bit more, jack your price up a little bit. So that's kind of what you're doing. So first things first, your wholesale suppliers. If you're in a position where we're in right now, where you have wholesale products that didn't come in for whatever reason, you're not going to be getting them, or they're back ordered until a time where you really feel nervous about them even making it to the shelf, you need to call your rep. Now, I know everybody does everything online and, you know, there's a lot of people that I call, what is it? It's, I don't even know if it's a real thing. It's like phone anxiety, right? Like you don't want to pick up the phone and call somebody because you just like don't know what to say. You don't know what they're going to ask you. But you guys, you just got to, sometimes you just got to do it. Like if I can do everything off of email and text, I probably would. And I'm actually a people person. I just feel like things can get done faster and more direct if you're just that way. But sometimes you just got to pick up the phone and call. So when we got an email from our rep that was basically like, we're sorry, we're not getting in your, your Halloween stuff on time. We gave them a call and we said, is there anything that you do have stock of that we can that you can ship immediately? And so they sent us this list of the things that they have in stock ready to ship. And we did some really fast research to see, can we supplement with some of these products because we're not getting the products for our bundles that we wanted. And so that was a really fast way to get that done. Just say, tell us what you have ready to ship now and we'll see if it's selling and if it's something to do. So that's something you can do right now. If you realize that, you know, your shelves are going to be empty, your, your stuff's not coming in, call your rep and ask them. Now, if you don't have a rep, email somebody or get somebody on customer service on the phone. And here are the things that you can ask them. Say, do you have a catalog of in stock, ready to ship items? Do you have like a spreadsheet, anything like that, that I can look at? Do you have a list of products? There's one vendor that we have that literally sends a list Every, once a week of all the stuff that's in stock ready to ship and all you have to do is call them and say do you have x amount of these because as the quantities go down it's like live inventory not a lot of vendors use a live inventory system so if you can find a vendor that literally has like what they have in stock online is it and then like when it sells out it's gone that's how every vendor really should work in my opinion but Unfortunately, a lot of them are stuck in the Stone Age and don't kind of do that. So call and ask before you order. So if you have a PO or you built an order from a specific company and you usually send it in a website, I would call them, either your rep or even their customer service. They almost always have 800 numbers you can call and say, I'm ready to place an order, but I need to know that these things are in stock and ready to ship and when they anticipate shipping. Because We've got to get stuff on the shelves and we've got to sell it and we've got to get it in the system before, you know, and Amazon's taking a, some longer time sometimes to check in different things. So we're definitely playing with the clock here. And so we want to make sure that we are getting stuff that's in stock and ready to ship. There's nothing worse than ordering online and having three out of four items shipped and one's back ordered and that's part of your bundle and your bundle's completely dead in the water until you can get that item. That's a terrible thing to happen. And it happens more often than not when you submit online orders, which we do most of the time. But desperate times call for desperate measures. And if I can just be upfront, I feel like we're in desperate times, especially, especially right now for the holidays when the products seem to be scarce. Now, there's going to be a lot of back stock, a lot of things that like maybe people bring out, uh, retailers bring out from last year. Some stores store things for seasons and sometimes they don't. So if you're going into a store, you're using a vendor that does not carry over their seasonal stuff season by season and they kind of sell it outright and try to get rid of all of it. Last year's stuff will still sell, people. If there's nothing else on the shelf to sell, then last year's stuff it is. And you know what? People are not just going to go without because they wanted the newest, latest, greatest. They will get something. So because of that, it's time to do some research. It's time to do some digging. So get on the phone with those, those suppliers and ask them. Ask them if they have a cash and carry warehouse or if they plan on liquidating or have any liquidation or um, kind of last call discounted items. It doesn't matter. However you can get product and get it on the shelf, get product and get it on the shelf. 
Then you want to also look for, and I'm going to do a demo of this here in a little bit once I kind of go through some of this stuff for just a brief demo of showing you um, how I do this on the websites when I'm looking for something specific. So you also, you can look up where to buy. So most of your, your wholesale vendors have some sort of website that will also say, you know, this is for wholesale customers only. If you are a retail customer, here's where you shop. And it's either A, their online store, or they say where to buy in stores and things like that. So I'm going to show you that. Now, you might have to pay more for your stuff if you're buying at retail. Obviously, you're not getting wholesale prices on those items, but with lower supply and it's the same demand equals higher prices. This is just the nature of the beast. So making sure that you are getting, you know, if, if you have to raise your price because your normal wholesale price is like $4 for something and you have to pay $7 for it retail, then the price has to go up, right? But at least you have products in order to sell them. So that's more of what you need to do with your wholesalers. You need to call them, call your rep, ask, place orders on the phone and verify that they have the stock that you're ordering and that have it ready to ship before you place any of those orders because time is of the essence. Retail arbitrage and online arbitrage when it comes to this particular emergency supply chain product shortage that we're facing for this particular holiday season. It's time to venture out. It's time to, if you can't get products from your wholesalers, get it from the stores. Get it from online websites. Now, online is fine and actually like a lot, it's very convenient, it's almost just as convenient as wholesale. The problem is lead times. And if you guys have dealt with UPS or the post office at all in the past three or four months, you will know that priority mail is not exactly priority mail anymore. I, I mean, it used to be two to five days and now they're not guaranteeing that. They have worker shortages everywhere. They don't have as many employees working. They don't have as many people delivering packages. So it's not, it, it's not timely like it used to. You can't, can't order something from Target and have, you know, two-day shipping and have it be here. I mean, Amazon Prime is even really struggling to deliver your two-day shipping. So because of that, just be aware that lead times and order times are going to be a lot more. And sometimes people are facing, talk to a few clients the past couple of weeks, are facing uh, online arbitrage orders just being canceled. Like they just will cancel it. So you need to be a little bit more scrappy, be a little bit more creative. Those of you guys that are already doing retail arbitrage, it's about speed and and getting it in as fast as you can or listing at Merchant Fulfill until you have a chance to send it into FBA. So don't waste that time. Just list your products and then at Merchant Fulfill if you have to and then ship them into FBA once you have a chance. Or some clients I know right now are doing 50-50. So say you get like 10 or 12 of something, retail arbitrage or wholesale or whatever, and you all of a sudden, you, you want to list half of them as Merchant Fulfill and half of them as FBA so that you have something for sale all the time. If you're sending it all into FBA, which is definitely fine, um, then you miss out on all of those sales while it's in transit. Some people don't pre-order or they'll say this item is available on, you know, 1110 or something like that. So Amazon's getting a little bit better about showing people what kind of um, time they're going to wait in order for this product to be back in stock. But the other problem there is that some people don't want to wait for whatever reason, so they will just purchase it Merchant Fulfilled if they can add it to cart and get some sort of delivery date. So that's another thing that you can do as well. So you can look up some of the popular products online and see where they're sold and what stores they're sold at because you might think oh I got this at Walgreens but you know Walgreens is not the only place that carries that product or I got it at Target where else is it sold so I'm going to show you a little bit of a demo on that now so that you guys can see where you know this is just an example of how this works and forgive me I'm using some new te technology today so um, I want to make sure that everything looks good okay and ready, set, go. <laughs> awesome. So is, uh, for our podcast listeners, I'm going to try to walk through this as well. But this is, I'm doing a, a live like video demo of this. This is a Squishmallows uh, website here. Uh, my daughter is very much into Squishmallows. If you haven't heard of them, they're literally just these cute little stuffed animals, super, super soft um, animal 
stuffed animals, and they're all different, you know, different things. You've got unicorns and bears and rabbits and all this kind of stuff. So very, very popular, very, very collectible. There even New York Times picked it up this, you know, not too long ago on a blog post about people like literally collecting these and doing happy dances within stores because they found the ones they're looking for. Very big following, just whatever else. So, but Squishmallows, you're like, oh my gosh, you know, you've been buying them, you know, maybe from one of these stores and you're just like, I don't know where else to buy these because my source is dry dried up. You go scroll down towards the bottom of their site map or something like their, where it says retailers. So on the bottom of the Squishmallows website here, you see retailers. If you click on retailers, it's going to bring you all of the stores to which they sell these items. So, you know, you've got everything from Amazon and Costco and Kroger to Walmart, Walgreens, Toy City. So I'm just going to pick Costco right now just because I have a Costco literally half a mile from my house. And then all of a sudden it shows you, you click on this link, it says where these are sold, and all of a sudden it brings up Costco's website, and now I can look at the different varieties that Costco has for Squishmallows. And you can do this over and over again for, say, you know, here's one that says Claire's. Claire's sells exclusive Squishmallows for you guys that didn't know that. They have their own specific Squishmallows here. And yeah, this is all of the different ones. And it'll show you whether delivery is available. You can order them online or it'll say something like in-store only or that dreaded out of stock, right? We never we never want the out of stock ones. So that's just one way to kind of find these different items as well. Now, if you're looking for wholesale items, here's one here that's CWI Gifts. So CWI Gifts is... Um, a wholesaler that also sells their items retail, I believe, on their website, and they give big discounts for purchasing from, um, you know, different discount purchasing. As you can see here, there's like a 5% off, $700 or more, but what a lot of people don't realize about wholesale is going down to the bottom of their website, there's usually some sort of site map, and it'll tell you company info, this one has shipping and return services, everything else. They actually, this has warehouse shopping. So this particular wholesaler has open warehouse shopping. You can visit, if you're near Groveport, Ohio, you can go to CWI Gifts, um, their actual warehouse shopping, and they're open, it seems like, almost every single day until, you know, the end of November. So, and they have the same discounts. Again, this is still business to business, so you have to show your um you know, your exemption certificate, your vendor's license, you know, whatever else that is. But if you see their discounts are there, this is kind of a scratch and dent. Sometimes it's just some of them are cash and carries scratch and dent type things to where like the packaging isn't perfect. If it came in a box, maybe the box is missing. So you might just get like a coffee mug or you might get an ornament that's doesn't have any packaging, which who cares if you can repackage it, right? So this is a way to get inventory in your hand at wholesale prices. Not every vendor has a warehouse or a warehouse sale or something like this that you can, you know, get involved in, but this one does. So if you're anywhere near that and you have an account with them, you can go there and shop their warehouse and walk away with inventory you can send in right now. So these are the kinds of things that I'm talking about when it comes to getting scrappy about how you can do this. Maybe your warehouse, I know that there's a couple, there's several vendors that we have that have like warehouse locations where they kind of put either old stock, discontinued items, scratch and dent items that are cash and carry and they have certain um, hours for that. So always be aware of these different things that you can, that you can go and shop for because you never know if they have product or not. But I just tell you guys that, yes, we're kind of in a supply and demand issue. If you've experienced anything with your wholesalers not having product, we're kind of in the state of emergency. So what can you do? You can look up these products and where you can buy them in different stores. I mean, when I was just looking at those Squishmallows, I had no idea that they sold Squishmallows in all those different stores. Because I, number one, I don't go to the store that much, to be honest. Um, but when I do, I'm not always looking for those. My daughter is always like, take me to five below. Can I go here and there? She's always looking for these squishmallows but those are the types of things you can look for if you have a high selling product that you can't get from your vendor anymore look up where they sell their products in retail and see if you can get 
a handle on some of them because we know people bump prices up for Christmas and different things like that as well. But you don't want to have a slow Q4 because you weren't prepared. You can be prepared. Now, you guys know that I'm a wholesale bundle queen. I love making bundles and specifically with wholesale. But when the going gets tough, I'll do what I have to do. I'm going to go out there and I've been doing retail arbitrage for three months now. I'm very selective about what I choose. I do not choose big branded items that I'm going to have a hard time with um, hijackers and things like that. And I still create bundles with my retail arbitrage stuff. As a matter of fact, y'all can't see like the behind the scenes here, but like I am surrounded by retail arbitrage bundles that I have around here that I need to take pictures of and have them set, you know, edit them in Canva is my favorite place to do that. You know, it used to be people even with Photoshop and things like that. Canva is so much better. Mommyincome.com slash Canva. Canva. If you don't have Canva, you know, use that. Yes, it's an affiliate link. Thank you very much for a couple of cents that we get for you, you know, participating in that. That's like disclaimer legal things I have to say. <laughs> um, but I love Canva because I can take my own photos here and then I can like remove the background on Canva now. I used to have to use a separate service for that, but Canva Pro now has the ability to like literally I can take a picture of something on my dining room table and they can remove the background and then I can make my collage photos. So I went shopping and got a really cool bundle idea that I had for Christmas that I didn't even research. I was just like, I might, it's very inexpensive, so I'm not risking a ton of money, but I did the research once I got home and my gut instincts were correct and it's going to be a great bundle. But I had to get all the stuff uh, arbitrage because um, it's kind of too late to get it wholesale. The wholesalers don't have um, accounts for smaller sellers, so I had to get creative. Same thing for you. So we're in kind of the state of emergency, and it's time to do a little bit of arbitrage. If you don't like going out to the stores and things like that, do the online arbitrage. Look for the warehouse um, the warehouses or warehouse sales or cash and carry or scratch and dent type of things that you can get from your own vendors. Ask them, do you have a warehouse where you, you know, get rid of the stuff? Also, the other question you can ask is, do they use any sort of liquidation companies for things they're out of? Go to liquidation companies. When it comes to, um, okay, so one of the best ways to find closeout and liquidation companies that might have some stock from like last year and, you know, for pretty cheap is like go to the ASD website and go to even, you know, their next marketplace is probably going to be in March, uh, February or March of 2022. But you should be able to register for ASD right now. Register, look at their exhibitor list and type in liquidation or close out because those companies, even though they might be vending or having a ex exhibition booth or whatever they have at ASD, they're still open right now. You don't have to wait for a trade show to get in contact with them and say, hey, do you have any Christmas clothes out that I can look through? Do you have a catalog? Do you have something? I mean, we've got to get products to be able to sell. So these are ways that you can, you know, kind of go around the curves of what's going on in the supply chain right now in order to stock your store. So don't forget about liquidation and close out, especially for seasonal items. Liquidation and close out is a good good opportunity because you don't necessarily have to feel like you're risking a ton for, you know, this whole entire season. Maybe it's just a test that you're doing. And even liquidation and closeout, they will sell you a smaller amounts of product. You don't have to buy every like 5,000 units of what they have. So just ask the questions. If you're unfamiliar with the questions you want to ask, even closeout or wholesalers or anything like that, um, there's a list in the wholesale bundle system of questions to ask your wholesalers. So in these trying times, what do you have in stock? When can you ship it? And then looking at products that, you know, if they sell retail, you could also ask them that. What major stores are your products in retail? Because maybe you can get lucky and go down to Bed Bath & Beyond and they might have the kitchen towels that you've been selling from your vendor that they're out of stock. So you just never know, but you've got to get scrappy. You've got to get creative in an emergency situation, which I believe we're in with the supply and demand and just time will tell. Um, but so far, um, in desperate times call for desperate measures. So get a little scrappy, put on your big girl pants and get ready to work really hard this Q4. It will be worth it, but you might have to do things a little bit differently in order to get product on your shelf uh, the way you want to. My last and final thoughts with these are really just go wide and not deep. 
don't buy 5,000 of one product. Instead, just buy smaller. So if you're going to do, you know, retail arbitrage bundles, um, you know, buy 6 to 12. Don't necessarily buy like, oh my gosh, this is going to be the best idea ever. I'm going to buy 500. Um, you know, go smaller and straight up wholesale. If you can make a few bucks on something and, and move it through because you can find product, pay attention to your prices. Pay attention to prices more this year. If you're competing with other people, if you're doing bundles that you're creating, you're generally not competing anyways. But if you're doing single wholesale items or you're jumping on someone else's listing or bundle, at that point, I would be paying attention to your pricing. If you took the Q4 class, then you know exactly how to do that because that's in the Q4 class. If you're a hub member, you already have the Q4 class, go back and rewatch it in like 10 times speed so that you can just go to that one spot and watch that class. But knowing how to pay attention to tracking prices with Keepa and uh, those other things will really, really help you this Q4. So don't say I didn't prepare you. Don't say I didn't warn you and tell you. I don't want to hear you guys whining in December when you're like, ah, oh, there's no product. No, just kidding. I know you guys don't really whine, do you? Some of us do most of the time. I don't know. I'm just being silly. But here's the reality. You can be prepared. It is not even November yet, but you can be prepared for this if you do um, some of these things. So one of them, two of them, anything that can help you keep and get good stuff on your shelves at decent prices. Pay attention to your prices. Pay attention to your stock levels and do what you've got to do to get yourself a really good Q4. This is a random, weird, strange season and it's probably going to carry over into 2022 so the more you're um, aware of the problem and how to solve it for your personal needs the better off you're going to be in your store don't forget about the workshop you guys i can't wait to meet you in january bundles are better than ever i'm really excited about the different bundles i've seen even for the holidays and how we can come into 2022 with the best goals and the best way to um build your bundle business for competition proof. So mommyincome.com slash workshop. Don't forget workshop 50 is your special discount code. And we'll see you same time, same place next week on the Amazon files.